Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome, my hadith disciples, YouTubers, and viewers upon the Sunnah and Athar to another exclusive episode of FMF 5 Minutes of Faida. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah ya ma'bad. Well, we all know the important status or the paramount status and the absolutely necessary obligation of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. The Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam, stated, He has told us. Is that there, if there's no form of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, then basically there's no iman. When you see it, you change it with your physical hands. If you can't change it physically with your hands, then speak out against it. And if you can't speak out against it, then at least hate it in your heart, change it in your heart. And that is the weakest and lowest level of one's faith. Oh, we have al-ma'na and the well-known authentic hadith. Let alone the ayat in the Quran and Kareem that declare how the previous nations were cursed. They were damned. They were ruined because they refrained, they avoided, they turned a blind eye from enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. And how Allah Azza Jal praises this ummah being the best ummah, the most excellent ummah, the superior nation because of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Of course, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil has a proper understanding. There's a fiqh to it. There are do's and there are don'ts. There are adab, manners. There is an etiquette of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. What's important is when to do it, when not to do it, how to do it. Do we change this? Do we go into the street? Etc. 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 I want to share with you a profound statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah ta that he mentioned in Al-Istiqama. He said that there are three things needed for successful in joining the good and successful forbidding of the evil. And those things are Al-Ilm wa rifq wa sabr. Al-Ilm wa rifq wa sabr. Is that you need knowledge, you need gentleness, and you need patience. You need to have knowledge before you enjoin the good and forbid the evil. You need to have gentleness while you enjoin the good and forbid the evil. And you need to have patience after you enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Of course, if you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what you're saying, you're gonna tell the people to do something that they don't have to do. You're gonna blame the people for avoiding something that it was okay for them to avoid. It wasn't a wajib. It isn't obligatory. The different views, different opinions of the ulama, they may be following the teachings of those who say you don't have to do this, etc., etc. Let alone enjoining something, forbidding something which has no foundation in Islam, which has no origin in Islam, something that's made up or something that's just cultural, etc. So, la buddha min al ilmi fil amri bi ma'ruf wa nahi anil munkar. You have to have an ilm. Number two, while you enjoin the good and forbid the evil, you must have the necessary rifq. It doesn't mean that there's nothing which is hands on. It doesn't mean that you don't become angry for Allah's sake. It doesn't mean that you don't use strength when you're supposed to use strength. But there's always a need for rifq. Even in using force and strength and violence, there's always the need for rifq. As the Messenger of Allah tells us, Ma kana arifqu fi shay'in illa zanahu. Is that whenever gentleness is there, then the thing is beautiful. And Allah rafiqun yuhibu rifqa wa yu'ti alayhi ma la Last but not least is that you know what you're talking about, what you said is correct, and in joining the good and forbidding the evil, you are gentle, you use the necessary kindness in this necessary place, in this proper place. Afterwards, you got to be patient. Everyone isn't just going to jump and change and evolve into what you want them to evolve into overnight and immediately. How long have you been making this sin? How long have you been making this error, this mistake, so on and so forth? Did Allah punish you? Did Allah destroy you? Did Allah sing to the fire of hell? Allah gives you life, He gives you air, He gives you breath, He gives you food and drink, and you still disobey Him. So He has to be patient with the people. Inshallah, they'll change. Inshallah, they'll get the message. Inshallah, inshallah they'll listen. Or even the sabr for not having the ability to physically change it. You never know what Allah will allow you to do in the future. You never know what will take place and how the situation will improve and become better. So therefore, you must have these three things. Knowledge, gentleness, patience.